Hello, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to give you an overview of the most important palette in Photoshop, the Layers Palette. This video is a part of my Photoshop Essentials series and the first module of my upcoming course, where we create this cinematic composite from start to finish using the latest tools in Photoshop. Now, if you haven't yet, you can still get on the waitlist with the link in the description so you're the first to know when it releases. All right, now let's dive into Photoshop. So here on the right, we have our layers palette. And if I scroll up or down, I can also scroll with the scroll bar. You can see all the layers that make up this image here. And down at the bottom, we have our background. And then we have a bunch of layers sitting on top of that. Now this little eyeball represents the visibility of that layer. So if I turn it on or off, you can see this little butterfly here is turning on and off. And if I move my way down and turn off the layers, you can see elements inside my document disappearing. And this kind of also should give you an idea of the importance of layers inside of Photoshop. With layers, you can do so much to an image. You can add elements like this. You can add text. You can put new, Im uh, new images or new photographs, cut them out and put them inside. You can put some foreground grass in there. We can add another bird. We can add butterflies. And we can do all that because we have layers. Now, the way layers work is the layer that sits on top here is also the one that sits on top here visually. So the lower a layer is inside the layer stack, which is what your layers um, are referred to as your layer stack, the further down in the layer stack, the more back it's going to be in the 3D space of your image. So for example, right now the phonograph is sitting on top of the layers. However, if I took this layer and moved it below layers here, now this text layer is sitting on top of the phonograph. So you can see how that allows you to make various elements of your composite or your image interact with each other in ways that you would want them to. Now, the different types of layers, um, which you can see this little filter here, but you have a pixel layer, and those are just pixels. Then you have a smart object, and that's represented by this little icon here. A smart object is a layer that you can make copies of, and those copies will, will be instances of the same object. So for example, this is the green butterfly. If I double click on this, it opens a separate file. And let's say I added some antenna to this. So I'm gonna go to my brush tool here, right mouse click to bring up my brushes, put this on 100 hardness, and maybe two pixels and then paint some antenna here and then save this you can see that the antenna was added to this butterfly and this butterfly even though i just ad adjusted it once and that's because both of these butterfly are smart objects so that's what a smart object is and how you would use it um, here you can see a group, and a group is more than one layer put together in a single group. The advantage of this is I can move this group as a unit, and the relationship between the layers inside that group will remain the same. Also, as we get into blending modes, you can assign a blending mode to a layer group. We'll cover uh, blending modes in the next lesson. But just realize that with that, you can change the blending mode of the group. Okay, next you have text layers, and text layers are text. 
um, if you go to the text tool inside of Photoshop and select it, you can see that you have the option of changing that text. Um, you can also change the font, the size of it, and so forth. So that is the text layer. Next, you have a shape layer. And a shape layer is a vector object inside of Photoshop. And what that means is if I zoom in here, you can see that this blue line represents a vector, meaning a mathematical shape that regardless of what size it is, will always have a smooth line. I'm going to go ahead and Command Z. Command Z is undo. If you go to edit, undo, Command Z is undo. Pretty common shortcut for a lot of software. Um, the advantage with a shape is I can have a fill, which can be a gradient. It can also be a solid color. Um, I can also, once I have my color here, I can also go and give this a stroke color. So let's say blue. I can change the width of this stroke and whether the stroke is dotted like so, and also whether it's inside my shape, outside, or in the middle. So I have a lot of options there. Um, these same options, by the way, are available up here. I usually have more options in my options bar than in my contextual taskbar. Um, so that is what a shape layer is. You can see I have another shape layer there. And then finally, we have adjustment layers. And adjustment layers are dynamic layers, meaning they're a layer where you have options for changing it after the fact. And this is an adjustment layer that adds a color correction. The advantage with this is, depending on where it is in my layer stack, it will affect all the layers below it, but not the layers above it. So if I wanted to change the color of everything underneath phonograph, I could go here, add an adjustment layer for hue and saturation, change the color, and it's going to change everything underneath, but it's not changing the color of my grass. If I moved it under the phonograph, it would not change the color of the phonograph. Okay, so those are all the different types of layers. Under adjustment layers, you have all the various color adjustments. You also have solid color, which just creates a solid color layer, a gradient, which creates a gradient, or a pattern. And those are all the different types of layers. And that finishes a basic overview of the layers palette. The one other thing that we didn't really cover here is masks. And a mask allows you to erase part of your image without actually deleting any of that pixel information. So if I select this phonograph here, this down here is the mask icon. If I click on that, white reveals and black hides. So if I go to my brush here, make black my foreground color, and then make my brush bigger, and the way I'm making this bigger is by holding down Control and Option and then dragging left and right. You can also right mouse click to change the brush size here. You can also go up here in your Options toolbar and change your brush size. So there's a lot of ways to change your brush size. And if you see this um, X instead of your brush, that means you have the caps lock turned on. So I'm going to turn off the caps lock and now I can see my brush there and if I paint on the mask I'm basically erasing this part of the image but if I want to show it again all I have to do is paint white on the mask and now I'm showing that layer again so mask allows you to erase something without actually getting rid of the pixels and as we work inside of our project, you'll see the value of layer masks and what you can do with them creatively as well. But that is a layer mask. Essentially, a layer mask is a black and white layer that determines the transparency 
of your layer. I'm going to delete this layer mask, which we can do like so. So those are all of your layers. Um, up here is where you adjust your blending mode, and we'll cover that, what the different blending modes are in the next tutorial. And here is where you can adjust the opacity of your layer, meaning how opaque it is or how transparent it is. Fill also determines the transparency of your layer. There are some subtle differences between opacity and fill. However, those are a little bit more um, advanced for now. Just use opacity. Down here, you can lock a layer. So you can lock the transparency. If I now brush this with a black brush, you can see it's um, sticking to the transparency of the layer. So that's what that lock does. I'm going to command Z a couple of times to get rid of that. This one stops you from brushing on that layer. Could not brush the tool because the layer is locked. This one stops you from moving the layer. And this last one here prevents auto nesting of uh, artboards and frames. It's a little more advanced. You'll probably never need that. And to be honest, the only two locks that I ever use are the transparency lock or the overall lock, which just locks everything in the whole layer. OK, next we have fill again. This is very similar to opacity. There are some subtle differences. We're not going to cover those now. Then we have your eyeball and this will show or hide. If you hold down Option and click on the eyeball, it'll isolate that layer, meaning it'll turn everything else, hide everything else, and just show that one layer that you Option click the eyeball for. And if you Option click it again, it'll show all your layers. Now, if you have a layer turned off, like for example, I have my grass turned off, and I Option click, and then Option click again, that grass will stay hidden. However, if while I have this, I turn on another layer, I can no longer option click to turn on all my other layers back on. So just be careful when you do have a layer isolated that you don't change the visibility of other layers before you option toggle again to get out of that view. So that's your layers palette. We did mention in the last one that you can go to your panel options and change some things here. Also, in this little contextual menu, there are some other options like being able to rasterize layer, um, delete hidden layers, merge visible, flatten. So, and this is true for a lot of your palettes inside of Photoshop. When you have a palette open, if you go to this little menu, you're going to see a lot of functions that relate to that palette. So there you have it. That is an overview of the layers palette in Photoshop. In our next tutorial, I'll be covering the blending modes and how they can dramatically change the look of your work. Now, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, like and share this video and leave a comment and I will see you next time.